scripture is from Matthew chapter 2. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born the king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all of Jerusalem with him. And calling together all chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, and by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for whom you shall come a, a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they, <clears throat> when they had heard the king, they set out, <clears throat> and there ahead of them, went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child Mary, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. God is good? All the time? How are all you surviving this? Uh, this is actual kind of like winter. I'm experiencing actual real winter. Uh, this was not told to me when I uh, interviewed here that you guys actually... I was trying to escape all that. Um, today is Epiphany. This is the day we celebrate the manifest manifestation of Christ, particularly uh, at Bethlehem in the manger when the, th the uh, wise men come to visit uh, baby Jesus. I'm not very good at telling jokes, but I've, I've found a joke on the internet that I want to share for this very special occasion. All right, I'll give it a shot. Uh, three wise men walk into a barn. And... They see Joseph, Mary, and baby Jesus, and Joseph looks up at them and says, Why are you disturbing us? My wife just had a baby. Uh, she needs rest. And the first wise man said, oh, I, I, I have brought gold for this child. Uh, Joseph thanks him very uh, graciously and then please ask them to leave so that we can care for the baby. And then the second wise man said, well, But I have brought frankincense for this child. And Joseph again thanked the, the, the wise men, but now he's beginning to get kind of annoyed, like they're not getting the, the, the idea it's time to leave, and they were interrupting this very special moment in, in their family. And then he finally just asked them to leave, but then the third wise man said, but wait, there's myrrh. <laughs> <laughs> you got any jokes, Pastor David? <laughs> you didn't think I'd come here with that one, did you? <laughs> Do you know Paul... There was a fourth wise man. No. Any of you know oh, that? Really? You've heard of the three wise men, yeah. the three magi. There was a fourth one. The problem is he brought fruitcake. <laughs> <laughs> and he has not been heard from ever again. <laughs> I looked at our Lutheran hymnal, and we're going to sing a song later. Do you know what hymn is not in this Lutheran hymnal? We Three Kings is not in the hymnal. It's a travesty, right? Help me, we're going to sing a little bit later, but let's practice. We three kings of Orient are Bearing gifts we traverse afar Field and fountain, moor and mountain Following yonder star O oh, star of wonder, star of light, star with 
with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. Isn't that a beautiful song? Do you know, I think, why it's not in the hymnal? Because <laughs> it's because it's wrong. It's it's biblically inaccurate completely, right? How many ma- how many kings were there? After, how many kings were there? Three. It actually doesn't say. It doesn't say any number. It just uh, it does it gives the plural version. And guess what else? It doesn't say anything about any kings. There ain't no kings in there. It says. Uh, it actually doesn't even say wise men. You know what the word is? It's magi. Everybody say magi. Magi, magi is the plural form of, I don't know how to say the singular, mag, mag, magoi or something like that. Uh, and so what is this magi? If my uh, sermon title today would be something like the not-so-wise wise men. Uh, these magi, in truth, uh, the, in, the initial form of the word probably came from the Zoroastrian uh, religion, and these were Zoroastrian priests. Now, if you don't know anything about the Zoroastrian religion, uh, it's actually quite interesting. Way back in the day, there were a lot of polytheistic religions uh, that uh, prayed to lots of different things and whatnot. Zoroastrianism uh, came out of uh, Persia, or what we'd call today Iran, and it was one of the very first monotheistic religions in uh, the world, and they, uh, it was quite a simple religion that you uh, try to do good and avoid bad as you um, try to find uh, salvation and eternal life, um, and Luther wouldn't have liked that because we know that we're justified by grace through faith apart from works of the law, but uh, it's a very interesting religion, and some of the uh, class of priests called magi, these people uh, were dedicated to interpreting dreams originally. They had the gift to be able to interpret dreams. We can think of Joseph in the book of Genesis who could interpret dreams and Daniel uh, who could interpret dreams. And later on, guess what else? They expanded uh, their, uh, their responsibilities to interpret the stars. They uh, got into what we might call today astrology. Uh, how many of you uh, check the daily horoscope in the morning or at the end of the day to see how your day is going to be the next day? No? Uh, I don't know. Oh, so good. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of fun to look at it and see. Who, who, how many Leos are in the house? Yeah. Oh, good. Just, just a few of us lions in the, in the house. That's good. Um, and the Magi, uh, eventually that could also include kind of um, magicians. You know, we think about Vegas. Uh, we've got tons of magicians in... in uh, they, they're uh, designed to kind of trick people and make, convince people that they're able to do things that, that are sort of in the mystical realm. Uh, all these uh, folks, these are what the Magi were um, that came uh, to interpret the stars above them. And in the Zoroastrian religion, there was actually also hope for some sort of uh, the birth of a savior in their own religion. Um, and so all this different things is going on. Um, so we might ask ourselves, how wise were these wise men? You know, were they wise? To me, I think, uh, if you look at the actual data, they look like they're not very wise at all. First of all, uh, from a biblical standpoint, they were heretics, weren't they? Looking to the stars to try to understand the future and to understand uh, uh, the truth and whatnot. Uh, looking out to see what God is saying through the stars. Uh, we'd consider them today outside of, uh, of Orthodox religion. And then secondly, uh, so they were kind of heretical folks. And number two, how prudent were these guys? Were these guys prudent, wise men? How many of you, if you looked up in the stars and said, oh, the Savior's coming today, uh, I got an idea. Hey, Jerry, I want you to pay your own way, get all the money that you have, and we're going to travel hundreds and hundreds of miles across the desert, the barren plain, and there's going to be a lot of bandits on the way, uh, and it's going to be dangerous. We don't really know where we're going, but let's, come on, let's go, right? No? 
Who's gonna, who wants to come with me? No? No takers? These guys were imprudent people. They just sort of up and left. Uh, there's different debates about whether they came from Iran or Saudi Arabia or other areas, but we knew that the journey would be long, and they had to pay their own way. And they brought with themselves very, very expensive gifts. So we know that these wise men were heretics, they were imprudent, and guess what else? They were a little bit naive, weren't they? They were really naive. So here it is, they've discovered that a savior, is, a king is born. A king is born for the world. And this king is probably going to be a threat to any king that exists here and now, right? And so they're traveling along the way, going boom, 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 riding along their camels. And then they show up and they see this great big city of Jerusalem. And they come in and they say, hey, we're here to see the new king. Guess how that fell on the ears of the people of Jerusalem? Guess how that fell on the people that had a vested interest in the status quo? How do you think Herod liked to hear this? These wise men come in and say, we're looking for a brand new king. Herod and the whole line of Herodian kings were awful bad, bad, bad men. Not only were they selfish and uh, looking to just uh, line their own pockets, but they were also had kind of, a, uh, I think, a line of insecurity. We think about uh, the, the son, uh, Herod, when John the Baptist had been thrown in jail, right? Uh, it took just the request of a little girl, and he decides to, to kill King uh, John the Baptist in the snap of a finger because of a social setting. This Herod probably was insecure because, A, uh, he wasn't really a king. You know, he was a servant of the Roman government. And second, he didn't come from the line of David. So as much as uh, a king, no matter who you are, you want the adoration and love of your people, don't you? Don't you just want to be adored by the flock and to be the one that's going to be the great king? That could never be Herod. Never. And so uh, the Magi walk into Jerusalem and the chief priests and the scribes and all those who had a vested interest in the status quo uh, heard that the ki these wise men are uh, trying to find this baby Jesus that will be the newborn king. And what does Herod do? Brings him in. And of course, it's, it's common knowledge that the pinnacle of this kingdom was King David and that the, the Savior would come from the town of Bethlehem. This was known by the leaders within the religious community. And so Herod sends them on their way. And the uh, fourth thing about these magi, they, they didn't have a good GPS system, right? They got lost on the way. They didn't, the star was there the whole time, and they didn't even get to the right place. So I don't know why these guys are called wise men after all. They are uh, heretics. They are imprudent. They are naive, and they don't have good directions, right? So don't let's stop calling these people wise men. Uh, but then Herod sends them to Bethlehem. Not far outside of Jerusalem, not far compared to the journey that they had been going on. And isn't that the amazing thing in our own uh, journeys of faith? When we, uh, all of us have a different road to Bethlehem. All of us have a winding pathway that kind of meanders this way and meanders that way. And, and sometimes we get lost and sometimes we may find ourselves uh, uh, in confusing theological places, sometimes we find ourselves lost, and yet God has guided us, like the Magi, to Bethlehem. Imagine if uh, we just had, and, and, and to me that reminds me of the, the fact that there are many roads to Bethlehem is a vital, vital thing for our church. We are a Lutheran church, right? Uh, but when we founded this church, we wanted to make sure that this was a church for all people in all backgrounds, that all can come to this church. Imagine if we just had uh, Lutherans, that only Lutherans were welcome at our church. 
How many people would we have? Raise your hand if you're a, a, a born and bred Lutheran. Okay, the rest of you, not welcome. <laughs> <laughs> New Song Church said, we want to be a church for all people. And if you come to our Bible studies, it's fascinating uh, all the diversity of theological ideas that we have at our table. We have, uh, we have people that are fundamentalist evangelicals. We have Catholics. We have people that come from a, a, a Lutheran background. We have some people that have no faith background whatsoever and have come to find Jesus here at New Song Church. And all those perspectives and all those ideas come together in one place at church. We uh, have always had an open table, right? Which means that whatever your path, whatever your road out on the street that brought you here, you are welcome at the manger and you are welcome at the table. That is vital to the ministry and the mission of New Song Church. And so the Magi, despite all these other things, find themselves at the foot of Jesus. And maybe there are some things that we can learn from these magi after all. The first thing they do is they kneel down. Don't let anyone tell you anything different. Kneeling is a sign of what? Respect and adoration. They kneel. And it says pay homage, but what does that really mean? That means to worship. And so, uh, despite the not-so-wiseness of these wise men, they are the very first people to worship Christ, to identify in Jesus that God has broken through into the world for the whole world, despite their being heretics, imprudent, despite their being uh, naive and easily lost. They worshiped Christ the Lord. <laughs> Another lesson that I learned from them is that uh, their spirituality, the way they worshipped Christ, was through generosity, wasn't it? How did they show their love and affection for God but bearing and bringing gifts? We don't know. We know that they had enough resources to bring these gifts, but they brought gold for a king. They brought frankincense for wisdom and they brought myrrh for healing. Are these not the very tools that Jesus would need for his ministry going forth? To proclaim to be the gospel as a king, to bring the wisdom of God to the world, and to heal this very world. And then the final lesson that I learned from these magi. You remember that Herod, that bad, bad dude, right? Uh, he's a, a little slick, isn't he? He said, go, go to Bethlehem. And, you know, I would like to, I'd like to visit the baby too. You know, I kind of want to bring him my own special gift. I, it'll be a medal of some sort. It might not be gold, but it, it may take the form of a sword. Uh, but I'd like to go visit the baby Jesus. So come back and give me a nice little report and maybe bring me some little uh, Instagram uh, photos. I'd like to see the baby. Uh, uh, but when we meet Jesus... When we bring ourselves and we bow down by opening our hearts to God's love and we let that, that love infiltrate our whole being, are we not changed? Do we not go forth from that love transformed? And so it says in this little sentence that they went home by another road. They left behind the sin, the devil, and death that waited them in Jerusalem and went home by another road. And if you read through your scriptures, everyone that meets Jesus is changed and transformed. And so may we follow in the footsteps of the not-so-wise wise men and kneel and adore the King. Amen.